Hey, what's up everybody? Chad here from Grayscale Gorilla, and these are my top 10 features in LightKit Pro 3. So coming in at number 10, we've got light types and controls. We've got nine different light types that you can toggle through right here through the main uh, little type tab. In fact, I'll just go ahead and arrow through these. We've got uh, LED rings, Kino flows, umbrellas, uh, ambient light, let's go back up to the ring light, maybe the panel, the softbox. And the softbox is uh, sort of an uber light. It can become a lot of different lights. In fact, um, you can actually change the uh, the sides of this. Let's just bring this UI up a little bit so we can see that. So you can see right here, I've got four sides. I could easily do eight sides and turn it into an octagon. I could even do something crazy and like make it a triangle if I wanted to. Not sure why I'd want that. Uh, let's just move that back to four. You also have the in viewport controls, which I love. So you can actually control the rounding of your softbox, control the height, you can control the width, you can even control the intensity of the light, which is really handy if you're just trying to dial that in. Also, you've got the controls right here of the stands, so you've got the ability to bring the scale up and down on the stands. And if you had a ceiling mount, you could actually come in here and adjust the height of the ceiling mount, maybe bring that down. You could extend it beyond its capability and it's going to automatically create more links, which is really cool. And then, of course, you can control the scale of those as well. So let's bring those back down to the floor. Cool. So the ceiling, uh, or sorry, the light type and controls are probably my, uh, one of my number one features, one of my, I have a lot of favorite features, but this is definitely on my top 10 list because it's very easy to manipulate and control the look of your softbox. Even trying something like maybe a hard shell here and maybe we change the sides. It's just like you can create like so many different looks on this. It's a lot of fun to start playing with. So that is number 10, light types and controls. So coming in at number nine, we've got position controls. There's lots of different position controls for Lightkit Pro 3. You can just drag your light around in the viewport and it will automatically target its center or the center of the scene. We're in target mode right now. So you can really quickly and easily move that light around. Let me just move around here so you can see a little bit better. And we can just move this light around the scene to position it onto our object. Or one of the ones that I like to use is actually POV placement. So we're actually gonna be looking through the light and placing it ourselves by hand. So we're actually treating the light like a camera right now. And I'm positioning the light right over the character's head or maybe I wanna put it directly in front of its face. And then we could just hit the POV placement to get back out. And we've placed that light exactly where we want it. Uh, if you don't wanna select the light and move it in, in your scene, like directly in the viewport, maybe you have a lot of lights and you just need to get in that get into this one light and control it very uh have a lot of control over it you can use the rotation uh, pitch tilt and scale down here in the size and placement so right now i can actually change the distance of that light to our subject let's just move in here so you can see that a little bit better so now you can see that I'm moving that distance in and out to the subject, but it's not really moving towards my character's face because I don't have that, that part of the character set as my target. So I have a null in the scene that I'm just going to move up to around the position of the character's face, and I'm going to tell that umbrella light to use that null as my target. So now when I grab that umbrella light and I move it in or out, it's going to be pushing it in and out towards that character's face, that towards that null. I can also adjust the rotation and the pitch, so you can really nail down exactly the angle of the light that you want to try to achieve. You can also rotate the light if you want to tweak the reflection, uh, maybe cutting across a cell phone or a car or something like that. Also, you have the ability to adjust the scale right here as well. So there's a, a lot of ways to control the light uh, position-wise, scale-wise, uh, right either in the viewport or using the size and placement tools over to the right. So uh, yeah, let's see what's next. At number eight, we have one of my favorite features uh, that we managed to get into Leica Pro 3, and that is the solo light feature. A lot of times when you're working on a scene, you want to be able to see the contribution of one light by itself so you can really dial in the color, the, the position, everything. We've made that really easy in Leica Pro 3. All you have to do is go over to your light icon and double click it, and it's going to automatically solo that light. So now you can see I'm only looking at the contribution of this light that's lighting up my background psych, and now I can sort of dial in maybe the intensity, maybe I want to bring it up, or maybe I want to bring it down. Same thing goes with uh, if I want to go back to seeing everything, I'll just double click it again, and now we're going to go back and see all the contrib contributing lights. Let's just look 
look at this one maybe, and we want to dial this color in. Maybe we want to go like a more blue for this one. Double click it again and to unisolate that light to see its contribution overall. This is really, really handy when you have like three or four lights and you're just trying to nail down the key to fill ratio and get your lighting uh, just really dialed in. The ability to solo lights is really powerful. Glad we got it in there. All right, so let's see what's next. Okay, so at number seven, we've got soft edge, imperfection, and gradient. Uh, we've really uh, spent a lot of time making sure that you have a lot of control over the look of your softbox reflection. So here we have a pretty simple scene set up. I'm going to jump into a close-up camera. Uh, let's make sure that updates. Okay, great. So um, I'm going to make this material just a little bit darker so that we can see that reflection pop a little bit more. Uh, it was important for us to add all kinds of control to be able to control the look of your reflection. Um, and they're all right here. If we go to the attributes, you can see under softbox, we've got all these controls. But uh, these three right here, the soft edge imperfections and the gradient are probably my favorite. So let's start with soft edge. What does soft edge do? What soft edge is going to do is going to soften the edge of your softbox. So if I bring this to like 25%, you're going to see that the edge of that softbox is going to become a little bit dimmer, almost like we're we're uh, putting a gradient on the edge and sort of making that softbox a little less harsh. The other thing that we have is the, the imperfection controls. Let's bring the softbox or the soft edge back down to zero. You can start to see, it's at 50% right now, a few wrinkles in our softbox material, almost like it's a, a fabric stretched over an, an actual light, and that's really what this is based on. We can bring this all the way up to 100 to be able to see all sorts of imperfections and sort of that fabric look, but if you're going for something more perfect, Perfect, you can set this to zero, which is just going to give you a absolutely perfect uh, one, no, no imperfections at all, no, no wrinkles, nothing. Um, and then my, my other favorite is the, the gradient. Uh, so the gradient is, is by default a circular gradient, so I can come in here and like make this a little bit darker to give it more of a moody uh, sort of look. So maybe the, the bulb is a little bit closer to the center of our uh, fixture. Um, but you're not limited to that. You can actually change this to like a U gradient, which is going to give you the ability to do sort of this wash effect. Uh, you can also do it to the V as well. Plus, you can add colors to this. So if you want your light to your light reflection to have some like completely weird color, that is going to happen independently of the light. So you're, we're not changing the color of the light. We're just changing the color of this reflection. Very, very great control. So you can really art direct your reflections if you're doing like electronics or cars or something like that, where you really need to get in there and art direct the look of your uh, reflections. This, these are the really great controls to be able to do that. Also, I love being able to see the stands in there. But if you don't want to see the stands in there, you can just do this. You can just say none. And that's all. That's all good. Maybe you maybe uh, you want to see the stands in there. I don't know. It's up to you. The other thing that's kind of interesting too is like if we zoom back out to our full view, uh, you can see we see our light fixture. Maybe we don't want to see that. We can just jump in the advanced tab and say seen by camera. No more. Bye bye. All right. Coming at number six, uh, we've got the expose light parameter under advanced. Now this is a this is one for power users that. Don't want some of these light controls locked away behind a UI or behind like Hit Pro. So this was very important to me as someone who likes to dive into the nitty gritty of a light and really get it to do what I want it to do. It was important for me that that the Light Kit Pro 3 did not get in my way. So uh, let me show you what that looks like. Let's just grab uh, this key light right here. We're going to click the exposed light parameter, and you're going to see it's going to expose the Arnold light that's being driven by the Light Kit Pro rig. So now we have all the same controls that we would uh, using a normal area light in Arnold. We can bring the diffuse contributions down to zero, or inversely, if we wanted to actually bring them up higher, maybe twice the contribution, you could do that as well. Uh, and then, of course, you can do all of your in include, exclude type things. We could tell it to ignore the statue. Uh, we can remove that. So it's important that we didn't lock away these controls. And this isn't just true for Arnold. This is true for Octane, for Physical, for Redshift. We wanted, you, when you hit that exposed light parameter, it's going to expose the actual light that you can manipulate, give you that extra fine level power user control. So let's see what's next.
At number five, we've got viewport modes. So if you're like me and you start to use a bunch of lights and things can get pretty hectic. So you got your, your baffles, you got your stands, you got your mounts, everything starts to get in the way. And I, I sometimes just don't want to see that stuff. I just want it to be clean. So uh, one thing that I'll do is I'll just jump into all my lights, just multi-select all the lights, come over to the light, and I'll change my viewport mode from detail to maybe medium, which is then just going to put every everything in bounding boxes and makes everything a lot easier to see. I don't have to look at those, all that stuff sort of like taking up space and uh, blocking my view. Uh, the next one that I like to use is even more minimal, and that's why we called it minimal, which essentially is going to drop everything down to its bare minimum. Let's go ahead and do that again. Minimal. And now we've just got lines representing our lights, which makes things even more easy to see and uh, not blocking my view. So the viewport modes are a great way to unclutter your view and uh, allow you to work faster. And of course, these are gonna render just fine if we turn on our IPR window again. Uh, if we step out of our render camera, if we want to um, be able to see these a little bit better, let's just jump out here. You can see they're all rendering just fine. They're just not showing up in the viewport the way that they were before. So it's a little bit more of a minimal viewport experience. So viewport modes, very powerful in my opinion. At number four, we've got the psych object. We decided to make a completely parametric a psych primitive to allow you to make backgrounds very, very easily and very quickly with a lot of control, like so much control. This thing is super addictive. I've been using this a lot lately. Uh, we've got all these different psych types. I think it's nine total. Yeah, we have nine different psych types that you can access through our cool little drop down, or you can come over to the tab and you can change them out to anything you want. The one I typically use is the S curve. It's got a lot of different controls in the viewport. I love these little handles here. These are great. Be able to adjust the, uh, the width, the curvature, uh, maybe the back curve and the top wall. Of course, the other one I love to use is going to be the corner cove, which gives you all these controls in the viewport, which is so nice to be able to create background psych objects very quickly. In addition to that, you've got all the controls right here. If you don't want to mess with it in the viewport, you can control all the same features right here. You can change the pivot, uh, the orientation. You can actually change the center, whether it's going to be the front, the back, whatnot. Uh, let me just undo these really quick. Uh, you can also change the subdivision level, subdivision height. We even have a tab for the material based on whatever uh, renderer that you're using. If I hit, let's say, standard physical, it's going to load in an 85% white standard physical shader. Uh, same thing goes with Arnold Octane and Redshift. So the psych object is addictive and a lot of fun to play with, and you can create some really cool backgrounds. In fact, if you combine these together, like maybe with a cylinder stand, bring the cylinder stand, stand up, you can start to create some really interesting looks. Let's load a like maybe a pedestal for a product that's sitting on there and that back wall is going to be lit. So using a, a combinations of the psych object is also great. Psych object, awesome. At number three, we've got the studio object. Now the studio object is a really interesting concept to wrap your head around. It basically is a wrapper for your rigs, for your studios. So if we go over to the softbox, a uh, little uh, light kit pro tab menu here and just grab a light kit studio object, you can see it's got this little hierarchy icon, which is uh, sort of telling because that's what it's expecting. It wants you to put stuff inside of it. So right now I've got a pretty simple scene I'm um, running Octane. Uh, so we've got a couple lights in here and we're gonna throw them under the, uh, the studio object here. And now that they're part of the studio object, I have a global set of controls that I can use to manipulate them. In fact, I could throw, let's throw the psych in there as well and let's throw the camera in there and let's even throw the sphere. Let's just throw everything in there. So now we have this site, the studio object that we can control globally, the scale of the entire scene which right now, this is crazy. I'm, I'm scaling the entire scene up and down. Uh, so if you have an object that maybe is mismatched or, or somewhere, uh, it's the scale is off, or maybe you have a completely different object that's like set over here, I can grab this light kit studio object and just move it to where that object is and I'm good to go. So this is really handy if you have a light setup that, you, that you, uh, you're you finding is working for you, but you just need to scale it up or move it around to a different object, that's, that's 
how you, the light kit studio object is awesome. Okay, in addition to scale, you've got global intensity, which is pretty self-explanatory. I can just bring the intensity down globally, or I can bring it up globally. That's important if you just maybe, maybe it's a little too dim, the client wants it to be brightened up just a little bit, maybe 120%. Uh, the other thing that's really cool is that you can adjust the global temperature. So you can sort of skew it a little bit cool, or you can skew the whole thing a little bit warm. Or if you have like a very specific color that you want to be able to tint it to, you can do that very easily as well. You can pick like a weird color, maybe like a green, and there you go. We've got a global tint that'll do that for you right off the bat cool. Uh, in addition to that, you can change the ceiling height of all of your, uh, maybe you have rigs. Let's just do that really quick. Let's put this guy on ceiling height. So now we can come over here and say, we want a, a, a ceiling height of 600 for everybody. And now everybody that has a, uh, a, a ceiling mount will, will adjust accordingly. Um, in addition, you can actually add more lights to this rig right here in this handy menu. Just hit that, and it's going to automatically add a new light to your scene. I won't put them in the rig because it doesn't want to presume that you want to do that, but it'll add a new light to your scene. Um, so that studio object is pretty cool. But the other cool thing about the studio object is its ability to uh, be a part of our browser, which I'm going to cover uh, a little bit later in a different video. Uh, but if you write, if you double click this, sorry, um, it's going to bring up the light kit browser. So this is where you're going to see all of the presets that you've purchased, any of the packs that you may have bought or, or picked up. Plus it's going to give you the ability to create your own. Maybe you like this setup and you want to save it. You can save it as a studio. We've got lots of videos covering uh, the light kit browser and things and ways to use it, saving your own presets and whatnot. So that is a great way to get into uh, browsing for or your, you know, your preset or whatnot. So the Light Kit Studio object is a great way to wrap up your, your light setup and share it with others or make global adjustments. Okay, coming in at number two, we've got one of my favorites, which is cast light versus reflected light. When we created Light Kit Pro 3, we wanted to shift the paradigm and sort of decouple light that's being reflected on your object versus light that is lighting your object. Now, why is that important? Because when you're doing things like products or characters or just whatever sort of motion design you happen to be doing, you want and need this extra level of control. So if I go into my, uh, I'm just grab this right soft box here, I'm gonna go to the main tab. You can see we have cast light intensity and reflected light intensity. Then we have a master intensity. So what this is, is it's the ability to change these two contributions separately. So if I go to cast light intensity and I bring it way down, you can see it's not going to affect my reflection intensity. My reflection intensity stays the same. This is really important when you want your reflections to remain the same, but maybe you want to cast more or less light into the scene. So let's just bring this up to back to 120, something like that. But now inversely, if you have enough light in your scene, but maybe your reflection is too dim, you can't see it, you can just bring that reflection intensity up to maybe like 500%. In this case, it's going to be pretty bright. So that sort of control is extremely important when you're trying to dial in your look. Then of course the master intensity is going to be a multiplier based on these two together so we can bring them. Now we've set this ratio that we like. We can bring the entire thing down a little bit or we can bring it up. And now these are going to be locked. This is like a master multiplier, this master intensity. So decoupling cast light intensity from reflected light intensity was a huge shift for us. And I, we think it makes for a, a way better image and a lot more control. Okay, so my number one favorite thing in LightKit Pro 3 has got to be render switch. We wanted to make sure that if you set up your lights with LightKit Pro 3 that you could switch from from Arnold to Octane, Octane to Physical, Physical to Redshift, and they would look the same. The lighting would look the same. It would feel the same, same intensity, same colors, that sort of thing. That was really important. A lot of people are using more than one renderer these days, so that was an important feature, and we achieved it with Render Switch. So here we have Physical with one of our presets called Minty Fresh loaded up, and I'm going to switch from Physical to Octane to show you this. Uh, let's go ahead and close this interactive render region. I'm going to go over to my uh, light kit object and switch it using our render switch here to octane, which is going to load all the octane settings and the octane lights. I do have to change the materials though because it's not, uh, we don't have material switching. That would be crazy, but let's go ahead and dump these in here. Okay, so actually let's make sure that this is on the psych and this is on the spheres. Now we just need to change our render renderer to octane 
And there we go. And let's go ahead and load up a Octane Live Viewer. And we are going to see the exact same look that we had in physical in Octane. This was a lot of work and we're really proud of this feature and we hope you love it. So those are my top 10 favorite things in Lightkit Pro 3. Check out all the other videos going into detail with these features and we'll see you in the next one.